My name is Jesse Cumming. I'm part of the programming team here at TIFF, where I work with uh, curator Andrea Picard on the Wavelength section. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that this morning's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. Uh, I'd like to let you know that the film in this program, uh, The Grand Bazaar, is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award, as well as the Girls People's Choice Documentary Award, and you can vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. Um, I'm very happy that we have the two filmmakers here today. I'm extremely fond of both these films. They're both colorful, they're both dynamic. They have a lot going on, and they're quite different, but I think the connections between them are subtle and quite rich. Uh, there will be a Q&A after, but please join me in welcoming Jody Mack and Elena lopez Riera. <laughs> Would you like to say a few words about your film? Please also thank uh, David, who's going to be doing some interpretation for us. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> yeah, I can start. So th thank you very much to Wavelengths and, and Andrea and Jesse for ha having me here. I'm extremely doubt uh, because this is a film I made in my, my hometown where I was born and raised. And for me, it's incredible just to be in Canada. It's my first time here in Canada. Yesterday, I was in the Niagara Falls, and I'm in love. I want to move here. And thank you. <laughs> I'm extremely happy also to share this uh, screening with Jody, with, uh, who I met here, and I'm, um, I'm in love with, your, with you and your film also. Uh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here. Is this on? Yeah. Um, thank you to Jesse and Andrea for having us. Actually, if you guys wouldn't mind giving a nice big round of applause to Jesse, because he's working yeah. so hard. <laughs> Sometimes I see him not eating. He's doing such a great job. Um, it's really incredible. Um, I'm also really honored to share this program with Elena. Her video is exquisite. Um, and I was just begging her for a link after the festival, so hopefully we can keep in touch. Um, my film is called The Grand Bazaar, and it's a study of pattern and the way it manifests itself through textiles, language, and music um, as a result of the global economy and sort of traverses the differences in understanding topologies of codification versus schematics of codification. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> There'll be plenty more we can talk about later. So for now, please enjoy the films and we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you for Thank you. coming. I, I have plenty of questions, but I thought we might open it up initially to the floor in case anybody wants to ask any questions. Yes, right here. Question is for Jody about animation, approach to animation, as well as the sound design, music, and other, otherwise. Sure. Thank you for your question. Um, I would actually argue there's three approaches to the animation. There's the close-up stop motion work that's on an animation stand. There's the scenes that take place in real space, which are basically uh, the same things that are happening if, as if you would be close up, but of course there's landscapes behind that are self-animating behind. And then there's a third approach which occurs um, from the computer screen with a strobing of perhaps like a uh, textile and its own making or textile and its own transformation or something like that. Um, and it was funny to me because I feel like a lot of my films are um, – kind of garish and super violent and fast um, in the close-up realm. But to me, with the, the double animation scenes, it actually made those close-up scenes seem serene almost because there's so much going on in the greater scenes. Um, so a lot of my editing approach came down to endurance um, and how much I felt or feared the viewer could or could not consume at once. And that was actually also a big part of um, structuring the sound in between the musical sequences as a way to find pause um, or palate cleansing as we move from song to song. More questions from the audience. Yes, right here. Hello. 
Elle est là. So the question is about the event and whether it was sort of exclusive or there was any tension about you being there. No, actually, they were super open. Uh, most of them are, are friends of my parents or, or, or members of my family because this is something that is taking place in my, in my hometown, as I said before, and in the whole area. So for me, it's super... I mean, it's nothing extraordinary about seeing those uh, color uh, birds flying because for me, uh, I, I, I was seeing that since I was born. <laughs> so it was, uh, well, first I, I answer your question. Uh, it was super easy and they were very happy that someone were interested about what they are, th they are doing. And they don't feel that like they, they always tell me that, but you can come like woman, we are open to you, but... <laughs> Uh, strangely, like we can say strangely, uh, como raro, uh, strangely there was no woman. So may, uh, you come, it's like, I don't know, the bars and coffees in Spain in the, in the 50s. There was no forbidden for women, but there was no one. So, <laughs> well. How official is it? Is it like a, is everyone there a member of this club? Sorry? Is it like an official yeah, club? Yeah, yeah, it's an official club with, with all the with all the uh, federation rules, and this is what I where I read in the in the text. Uh, this is very uh, yeah yeah very serious uh, thing, and there are, this is something I didn't want to put here because also I didn't want to use them and to put element that could give the opportunity to think that they are bad people or something like that. I'm I'm extremely resuming my, my ideas, but they, there are a lot of um, apuestas, of, uh, bets. of bets and money that is illegal. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like it, if I put something like this in that, that short film, I, I don't know, I feel like I was judging them and if maybe one day I would talk about this, but in a longer film. <laughs> I was saying the other day how much I love the voiceover. It's one of my favorite parts of the film. Uh, other questions from the audience? Yes. Questions about if there are any hidden images or Easter eggs because the montage is so quick in your film, Jody. No Easter eggs, sorry to say. Um, but thank you for the idea for my next film. <laughs> There are a few in the short film you showed on Friday, Hoarders Without Borders, a few a few surprises. That's true. There's actually some film boxes and a magic marker, Robitussin bottle. <laughs> More questions from the audience for our guests. Yes. Questions for both filmmakers about the approach to cataloging and databases, both the rules in your film, Elena, and then the different objects in your film, Jody. Why, why I choose these rules, I guess, more or less. Why, why. Uh, actually, it was um, for me, it was important that to... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> for me, I'm going to try to do it in English. But if I don't make understandable, you tell me. <laughs> okay. So uh, for me, it was important just to, to say I just pick up some of them, not all the rules. And this is why I put like 32 and 37, because for me, it's, I don't believe in uh, objective cinema. I don't believe in documentary. I mean... I don't believe in that documentary tells the truth and, well, you know, you all know about that. So for me, it's very important just to underline that this was my choice and this is my regard to, uh, over these people and over the whole thing. So it was a kind of easy or I thought it was easy to just to put on the table that it was my choice, not the whole thing, but just I pick up some of the rules. and Yeah. 
I don't know if I answer. Yeah. Um, thank you for your question. Um, there were definitely different types of patterns that emerged as I went along the film. And uh, one approach could have certainly been to follow one type of pattern, just make the whole film about diamonds or parallel lines or flowers, something like that. Um, but to me, I was very interested. I'm very interested in general in the human impulse to find order or to create fake order um, amongst the ineffable. Um, so to me, the idea of being able to map out something like a floral pattern speaks to this whole history of the de development of knowledge um, as when it comes to uh, visual representation, whether it be perspective or the different types of three-dimensional gridding that we're working on now that we're sort of going into three-dimensional Google mapping. Um, so I was really interested in making a parallel between um, the messy ways in which nature exists uh, against the sort of quadrants that humans have imposed to find order, not only in making the design in textiles, but in understanding space, understanding musical pitch, understanding time. Um, and like Elena, I also don't believe in the objectivity of cinema, which is why I chose to animate this. I feel like trying to make an animated documentary really lifts the veil um, and and uh, is completely incompatible with the notion of cinema verite, if you will. So that was another reason to not just pick one pattern, but to sort of try and express some sort of coexistence of these patterns. More questions from the audience for either of our filmmakers. Maybe on the topics of patterns and language, you could talk a little bit more about the music that you use in your film, Jody, and the sort of weaving of different genres that kind of mimics the, the patterns and language that or we see visually. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, you would have noticed a theme in the type of music I chose to interrogate within this film. Um, I wanted to work with lowbrow pop music um, in many ways. And if you know any other of my films, you would know that I'm really interested in this dividing line between what is low culture and what is high culture. Um, why do we credit Steve Reich with American minimalism when he's obviously just ripped off some other polyrhythmic musical form from another country or something like that. Um, I was amazed to travel around the world and listen to Drake everywhere that I went, <laughs> Beyonce everywhere that I went. Um, and the whole issue of putting things on grids and making sample-based musical softwares and things like this speaks to um, the homogenization of ideas, this homogenization of pattern that is uh, made that way strictly because it's efficient and because it's cheap and because it's easy to produce, right? So it was so amazing to go to all these places with amazing musical cultures that, again, just wanted to employ this 4-4, four, four, four on the floor, thumping beat. Um, and in the same way, many countries that have amazing textile traditions, really a lot of people from there, especially younger people, want to wear Nike shirts and things like that. So it's this whole exchange. Um, and another thing that really interests me about pop music is that it's something that moves the world, right? It's funny to watch this on 16 millimeter because a really integral part to the sound is within the sub bass, um, this level of frequencies that moves everybody in the club. Um, and through the sub bass, we find togetherness on the dance floor. Yet historically, the sub bass is a war technology. No, it's a way to work with sonic warfare. So there was again this sort of paradox between uh, unification and separation that spoke to me with this type of music. Excuse me, more questions from the audience. Yes. The question is the, the interest in patterns versus the fabric and how you kind of chose what you were interested in or what, what interested you. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I think I definitely approached it from a pattern form and I was really, or a motif perspective. And I'm really interested in this piece in the multiplicities of meaning that evolve and the moment at which something is sort of linguistic or lexical or functional versus the moment that it becomes decorative based on your own ideas associated with what you're looking at or hearing. Um, I was really interested in the same pattern being meticulously woven in a double ECAP form versus stolen, scanned, printed out on a piece of rayon or polyester and these types of slippages of meaning that occur um, based on the rapid growth of technology and the sharing that that permits, if that makes sense, or the exchange, not necessarily the sharing. Any other questions from the audience for our guests? If there are no more, maybe we can thank, thank Jody and thank Elena for their beautiful films. And thank you all for being here and for your questions. Enjoy the rest of your day, your afternoon.